Excellent. I was worried that Visage was going to be up there the whole time. Hi. I'm uh, delighted to be here tonight. Becky, thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, thrilled to be in this room with you all here tonight. Um, I was thinking this week about what I wanted to, to say here tonight, and I uh, reflected on, I was at the grocery store about uh, two weeks ago during one of our 79 degree March days, which was uh, unusual and not unwelcome. I'm going to say not unwelcome. And the, uh, the gentleman who was uh, checking me out remarked, hey, if this is climate change, sign me up. <laughs> so a few things came to mind. One, there's the weather and then there's the climate, but we don't have to have that discussion right now. But, but two, this notion of, of indifference and how do we take what you feel at an individual level and ladder it up to a bigger set of ideas. And that guy wasn't in any way trying to do anything wrong, but the, it was just a really indicative conversation or indicative comment to me of what we have in front of us. So I'm here tonight uh, as a Washington State voter, as a 25-year REI member, as our chief customer officer, as Becky shared, uh, and in that role, I'm really responsible to our 17 million members, our 17 million members across the country. If you're a member of the co-op, maybe raise your hand. All right. So you're my boss, basically. So let's, you guys were given great feedback, and I really appreciate your oversight. Okay. Um, I joined the co-op a, a little over four years ago, but I worked with the co-op for the first time 20 years ago, helping to launch a little initiative called REI.com. It's a shame that the internet thing didn't work out, but we're still, we're still working on it. Um, today, though, my job is really to be responsible with my team, a lot of, here, of whom is here tonight, to ask the question of what do our members care about? What do they need? What is the environment? What does the outdoors need from REI? We are uh, proud to stand at the front of an industry that uh, has a, a, an impact disproportionate to its size, uh, but part of that is really understanding where our members are. So. Um, our members feel a strong sense of ownership of the co-op, which is appropriate because they are the owners. I know they feel that ownership because they tell us what they think of what we do, good or bad, especially when they think it's bad, um, which is great. So when we expressed disappointment, uh, and, uh, and I go as far as to say frustration, at the US pulling out of the Paris Climate Accords, we heard from some members. We heard some really good stuff but we also heard uh, some feedback that sounds like this. Oh boy, REI gets political. Stick to your tent pictures and North Face posts. We don't want to hear your political views. It might be one of you in the room. You're a lot of members, so let's be, let's be nice. Uh, I have just called REI and canceled my membership. If this type of political activism bothers you, please do the same. The joke is on them. You're a lifetime member. You can't really cancel. So, <laughs> But thank you for the feedback. Um, we were, we were proud to step up and support 1631, and when we did, we got, yes, that's right. Some people less excited about that and shared the helpful feedback, bullshit REI, done with your left-wing lobbying, no longer do I shop at your stores. So, look, kidding aside, we take those letters seriously. But like everybody in this room, and, and honestly, you in this room far more than, than, than myself, as you know every single day, we're facing a bigger set of stakes. And while at the co-op, it's a priority for us, for many of you, it is the day-to-day -day life work that you do. And I thank you for that, I really do. I really, if I had a beer, I'd raise it to you right now, but instead I'll raise a hand. So um, the work that you do to set a path, to step into tough feedback, to step into challenge, inspires us. And we're happy and proud to be partners when we can. Um, but tonight I really wanna talk about choice, right? the choices that we make both as a co-op and as a broader community. In this room, in this city where the co-op was born, among people who inspire us by their fight for the health of this region and the planet, uh, passionate folks who have a sense of ownership in, yes, the co-op, but far more than that in this, this planet that we call home and this environment that we all depend on, I wanna talk about what we're doing and how we think about it. Not because I think we've got it all figured out, but because I think it's valuable for us to share what we see working and not working. At the co-op, we start with our values. We start with what we believe in. And for us, that belief is pretty simple. Um, we exist to awaken a lifelong love of the outdoors. This is our 81st year of existence as a business. That has been our purpose since day one. I'll applaud that as well. 
And we think a lot about choice, and we think a lot about that indifference that I mentioned earlier. There's a quote that I love from Elie Wiesel that says, the opposite of love is not hate, it is indifference. And that idea of the power of indifference to block us from the things that are important is something I think we all have to think about as we think about our strategies for winning the hearts and minds to change the world. It is understandable to want to be loved. It's, it's human nature. But the path to impact is not in chasing love. At the same time, it's not running away from hate, being afraid for people to be unhappy with what you do. It is about taking on indifference head on and being willing to run the risks of doing that. That's a choice. That's a choice that we try to make at the co-op, that we try to hold ourselves to. And, and you guys know this better than me. It's not, it's not always easy. That can be a hard thing to do, but it's important to us. And we've accepted that while some people will love you and some people will walk away, the right thing to do is about a bigger set of ideas. As I said, our purpose is to awaken that lifelong love of the outdoors, lifelong love of the outdoors, and to do it for everybody, to do it for all. But we live in a country where 150 million people, almost half the population, did not have an outdoor experience last year. Didn't go outdoors one time other than to go to their car, to go to their work, to go to the mall. Didn't have an outdoor experience. So how can we expect people who don't have a relationship with the places we're fighting to protect to fight on their own behalf, to fight for something they don't have a relationship with? We think a lot about that. The thing I'd say to us in this room, to all of us is, we will not have the impact we seek to have if we only speak to the people who are converted already, the people who already agree and believe with us. And it's hard, right? It's hard because it's tempting to build that echo chamber and get that feedback. But to win the hearts and minds of that 150 million folks who don't have that relationship, the people who are saying, boy, I don't mind a 79 degree day in March, we're going to have to do more. You did that with 1631, you built new partnerships, you had a bold vision, and you really said to the world, like, we're gonna have to make some tough choices. I would tell you as somebody who's a part of a business that we believe more companies have to step into that space. Why? Because, because as a consumer, and especially those younger consumers that every business in the world cares about, more and more and more of our choices are about organizations, companies, brands we believe in. That's a powerful force that we all have working on our sides if we can harness it the right way. At the co-op, we believe in collective impact. We believe in the idea of cooperative impact. So simply making noise is not our goal. Lasting change is the measure of our success. We believe in the power of that collective, and so what does that actually look like? Well, in the last year with the people in this room, we supported the pending clean energy bill. We're proud to do it, proud to stand up for it. The The recent public lands bill, by, uh, uh, headlined by Maria Cantwell and Lisa Murkowski, signed into permanent law just a few weeks ago. This is a really transformative moment for the outdoors. Yeah, I'll, I'll applaud that too. It's 120 bills, permanent reauthorization of the Land and Water Conservation Fund. Yep. The Mountain to Sound Greenway that so many of us love and use on a daily, weekly basis. Designation as a National Heritage Site. That's awesome, right? National Heritage Area. That's a big win for the state of Washington. And reauthorization and support of every kid in the outdoors. That's a program that lets fourth graders have access to public lands and national parks along with their families. For many kids, the first experience they have in the outdoors, that program is incredibly important for building that lifelong love. But we also know that we have to exemplify what we believe in. So the co-op, is and has been committed to 100% renewable energy since 2013 across 154 stores, our headquarters, and three distribution centers. I thought that was an applause line, but that's okay. We can, <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Committed to zero waste operations by 2020. Uh, yeah, okay, great. Let's just keep building. All right, I think you're going to like this one. We built the nation's first LEED Platinum Certified Distribution Center in Arizona, which is exciting. Where are my distribution center fans at? Um, Matt Thurston and his team set standards for 1400, our 1,400 vendor partners, new sustainability standards that are revolutionizing the industry and the impact we'll have for generations to come. It's a huge accomplishment and a big deal. Advocacy for our national parks and public lands. And last year, we convened 500 CEOs of organizations to stand up for uh, our public lands in the midst of our national monuments being under attack. It was a big deal. 
And this year, we're going to cross a, a really Im important and, and special milestone. We're going to cross $100 million of contribution by REI to philanthropic organizations across the country. $100 million. So, it's a great list, but it's not enough. So what do we do, right? What do we do to catalyze that greater collective sense, that sense of responsibility? What do we do to break through that indifference? The fight for a life outdoors must be a fight. It's gotta be a fight. We've gotta be willing to fight for it. We brought our entire organization together several, I guess about a month ago, and reaffirmed what our values were. And the number one value was we fight for a life outdoors. 14,000 folks focused on that and understanding that it's not about selling stuff, it's not about that website that I mentioned, it's really about the impact that we can have. And by growing our business, we can grow that impact. How do we link those things in a purposeful well, way? But it is a fight, right? So how do we win those hearts and minds? How do we overcome indifference? For me, I, I start by listening to somebody who's, any, somebody who's anything but indifferent. The generation that's gonna have to deal with what we do, good and bad. I have an 11-year-old daughter named Ellie who has very strong opinions about a lot of things. When I ask her and I ask her friends about the environment, and I asked them this morning, they were working on a hard-hitting science experiment about molecular gastronomy. It's gonna be a big hit this Wednesday at science fair. Um, but when I ask her about the environment, um, they're scared and they're angry and they don't understand why our generation isn't doing more to change it, right? They're confused by that and they challenge us. Yeah. Said simply, they, they think we're failing. And for all the list of things that I feel great about and we feel great about, I don't, I don't know that they're wrong. In fact, I think they're right. She also really insisted that I mention to you that glitter is very bad for the environment. <laughs> very, very bad. So she'll be happy that I told you that. For her sake, for the generation to follow, I, I want to believe that all of us, I want to believe the organization I'm a part of, REI, can address tough topics, that we can take indifference on, but in doing so that we can harness love, right? The way we do that is to turn back to our community. 17 million members who tell us what's important and tell us what they're passionate about. So I'm gonna tell you a story, a real brief story, two years ago, when shortly after inauguration, our current president decided to decree through executive order the immigration ban, the first version of the immigration ban. As an organization, yeah, that's a boo line, I agree, that's a boo line. Yeah. But as an organization with 14,000 employees, diverse and incredible employees across the country, 17 million members, we felt compelled to, to stand up and reaffirm our belief that the co-op is a place for all, our belief in equality. And yeah, we got, and people quickly knew, let us know how they felt. A lot of people were excited, and as you can imagine, a lot of people said, stay in your lane, stay out of politics. What we did was lean into love. And I want to share a video that, that, that it was the way we responded to that environment in that moment. My name is Naldo and my daughter's name is Ruby. Coming out to places like this, it really brings me back to the way I grew up. I remember my life in Guatemala. I had a very humble upbringing. Our home was in the middle of nowhere. Very simple, handmade hut. They have plastic ones. The milk that we drank, we got from our cattle. With a well, we got our water. Those were the first few years of my life. Oh, that's so cool! <laughs> I don't think I ever felt like there was a, a certain location and I felt attached to. Life kind of had me bounce around. I became a US citizen after I returned from my first tour in Iraq. I've built and lived the American dream, but it all started from very simple, humble beginnings. 
I realized that I'm not any less American by flying my flag from Guatemala. When I set up tent with Ruby, I like to have her go through the motions of creating that place. It starts with getting that fire and then getting the food ready. There you go, that's good. The earlier in life that Ruby learns how to make home wherever she goes, the better she'll be. I want her to be the type of person that when she walks in the room, she'll own it. It's simple, tippy toes in the rock and pushing off into that swim hole. Monday morning, when she's back to the real world, she's gonna know that she was brave enough to do that and she's brave enough to do anything else. I don't think I ever had that feeling like this is what home is. I create home wherever I go with people and with the things that I have. You know, I don't, I don't know about you guys, but it's hard for me to be indifferent to a story like that. It makes me believe that if we can listen to each other, that change is possible. So I, I, I simply want to say thank you to everybody in this room who's leading change from the front lines. Um, thank you to w, WEC for leading this collective effort and expanding what we think impact can look like. Uh, I think we're going to have a chance to show our support in a couple of minutes, so you know, store up that support and be ready to share it. And I also thank you for your support of REI and our mission. Our commitment is continuing continue to fight for life outdoors, both with and for all of you. So thank you so much. Appreciate it.